Now for another look at the Trump presidency. Face the Nation's John Dickerson joining us from our nation's capital. And it's always good to see you, John. Let's start with the main political headline of the day, and that is word from Senator John McCain uh, that he will vote against the latest GOP effort to repeal and replace Obamacare. This is an issue, John, that Republicans rode to majorities in the House and the Senate, the White House, and yet they can't get it done. So what's going on here? Well, that, uh, as you mentioned, they, it was a, uh, an issue that's been good with their voters, and that's what was behind a lot of the pressure this week, and that'll carry on into next week. Republicans want to pass something to make good on that promise. The problem is they can only lose a, uh, three votes. They've now lost two. M Senator McCain and Senator Paul are both against this bill, uh, and so now they cannot, they can only afford to lose one more. Senator Susan Collins of Maine and Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska voted against the previous effort to replace the Affordable Care Act. So it's likely that one of the two of them will do that again, and then that will mean the end of this effort. And the reason the clock is ticking here is because the, the vehicle they're using, which would allow uh, to replace the Affordable Care Act with a simple majority, that vehicle disappears at the end of uh, the month of September. And so if they don't get it done by then, they'll need 60 votes to do it. That means they'd need at least eight Democrats. And in today's politics, uh, that's just not going to happen on an issue like health care. Although this is a president who all of a sudden seems very willing to sit down and work with Democrats. We've seen that over the last week or so. Does this create an opening, perhaps, for President Trump to sit down once again and, and hammer out an Obamacare replacement or, or funding deal with Democrats? It could, because the openings that the president has seen with the Democrats are ones that have been driven by frustration, his frustration that nothing's getting done. So to the extent that if this bill goes down, the president gets frustrated and says, well, let me try another route, he could very well try something. If he did that, he'd really have to break open both parties, which is to say he'd have to be okay with losing a real big number of Republicans. And, and having to woo a big number of Democrats in order to get the numbers to work out in the House and the Senate, uh, that would be quite a trick, uh, and it would uh, certainly shake up and change the way things have been done in Washington recently. So I know he, he is anxious to do that, have that effect on Washington, right. and that certainly would be a way to do it. Uh, you know, here in Florida, as you know, we're still cleaning up after Irma. Uh, our friends in Texas are still uh, reeling after Harvey. And these natural disasters uh, have tripped up presidents in the past, their response to them. How has this president fared so far? Well, so far, if you, if you look at the polls, um, and, and uh, the reason I hesitate a little bit is uh, polling has always got to be looked at with, with um, uh, lots of grains of salt, yeah. as we've learned. And the polls, though, have, have uh, ticked up a little bit for the president in his response. And even if you're not looking at the polls, when we think of the damage that, uh, that presidential response did, obviously, to George W. Bush uh, with Hurricane Katrina, uh, President Trump has fared uh, far better than that. Uh, and so um, he has got, gotten through these two big uh, disasters in a young presidency uh, in a way that, um, particularly compared to some of the other bounces in, and bumps he's had in his presidency, uh, that has uh, gone pretty well for him. Always enjoy our time with you, John. Thank you so much. And you can watch John Dickerson at Face the Nation Sunday at 1030 a.m. Senator Susan Collins, one of his guests, a key vote in that repeal and replace effort. You can see the interview only right here on CBS4.